Greetings, unsettled souls. Uh, the, the couple remaining articles here I want to get to. You're going to get two stories uh, for the price of one in this one, so I'm going to zip through it. Okay, this this man here, this this brilliant, brilliant mind, who really has virtually no talent whatsoever, this man here, the guy, the, the brilliant man here in pink, wearing pearls, looking like he couldn't be more of a cross-dressing poser if his life depended on it. This man, M.G. Kelly, chose to mock Slipknot, who you can see there on fact kid, of course, who wears a mask. Now, there are those who could call horror theater, which Slipknot incorporates into their music, you can call that cheesy, you can call that whatever, and I happen to be a fan of horror and that genre, but for those of you who are not, I understand that you could in some way call it cheesy. I like it, but I can see where it's like, oh, come on. Scary clowns, long noses, okay, maybe, maybe it's not your thing. But for this, for that, that, to call anybody out, it, it, he said, I'm happy that I'm not wearing a mask and I'm almost 50. Dude, you're a millennial and you're wearing that. You're not the one to say it. Okay, when I call someone fat, I'm always careful to mention that I'm also fat. So there is that. That's not what he did. He's calling out a guy for wearing a mask when the guy in mask looks cool. When he looks like a driveling idiot. The other thing, which it got him on the, this segment of the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show, there's going to be two articles on this one. I'm not going to spend much time with this hack. But, um, <laughs> um, what a good job, M.G. Kelly. What a great job to make sure that you are not going to be invited on any theatrical tour or fest. Slipknot's a given. Mushroom Head, Kiss, Mudvayne, if Motigrader ever gets back together, War, ICP, Twisted, and Alice Cooper. Any theatrical project is now going to make sure that you don't get on the bill. Way to go, dummy. Welcome to the Dunce Cap of the Month Awards show. Yeah, twit! Got some talent! Well, it's like asking a clam to learn algebra. All right, guys, this is the other, the, the other, this is before we get to the winner. It's the runner-up. This is the runner-up for the stupidest story of the month. Are you ready for it? Indy 100. People are worried about going back to the office because they don't want to poo at work. I have a confession, and I, I've said this before. If I would have realized when I started this show 10 years ago, if I would have realized that, one, two things, if I would have realized, one, that people didn't want the truth, they wanted their lives to be given credence, the same weight as truth, they wanted facts to align to their point of view. And if they could be proven to not do so, then they became angry. If I would have realized that people didn't genuinely want the truth, I probably would have never started this show. The other thing is, too, I would not have started the show if I'd have realized how, how stupid the average... Like, you hear <clears throat> about the average... You, the average man walking down the street, and don't tell me about the average man because he is an idiot. And I noticed this when I was 16, 17 years, a long time ago, maybe younger, 14, 15, I used to think, <clears throat> walk downtown and I'd be like, these people are idiots. The average person walking down the road is a moron. But I assumed it was just something that was local to where I was at. Canton, Ohio, you could see why I thought that. No, no, people are way way less intelligent than I ever dreamed that they were. 
when I started the show. Way, way, way dumber. And this highlights that to a point. The only reason it didn't win the Dunce Cap of the Month award show is I don't know who I would send the Dunce Cap to. You'll see why. The pan anxiety. This is so stupid it hurts to read. Of going back into the office is real, and there is one symptom that some people are particularly worried about as a result. Pooh paranoia! After enjoying the freedoms that come with working from home, including being able to poo peacefully in the comfort of our own toilets, it seems readjusting our bowel patterns upon the anticipated office return is a big concern. You never know what? Unless it was a foul bathroom, that has never once crossed my mind. Is there anybody stupid enough that that has ever, for any reason, ever crossed your mind? Okay, maybe if you've got Crohn's disease or IBD or colitis, okay, you're exempt. Anybody else? Ever. Of course not! Could you imagine? A quick story to end this. When I worked in an office, I was telemarketing. It's the closest thing to hell I hope I ever get. I hope I never get closer to hell than this job. Dear God alive, please never. You were worried about sales. You were worried about how you were going to sneak sales in if you had to. You were worried about how you were going to eat. You were worried about your sales totals. You were worried about your cancellation rate. You were worried about verification calls. You were terrified every day that you went to work. The bathroom? With everything there is to worry about in the office, the bathroom. Friends, you can tune me out if you want to, but these are the people. Let me know if you hear this section. These are the people that are handling your credit cards. These are the people who work in offices that you're trusting with your cybersecurity, with your most intimate details. People that are afraid to use the bathroom. Not only are they too confused to know which bathroom they're supposed to use, which is bad enough, now they're afraid to use it at all. I think it's too late. I'm sorry, friends. I, I, just, I genuinely think it's too late. Don't cap for the month award winner, part five out of five, next.